Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sholoida, and the title of my presentation is called Increasing Diversity, the Billion Dollar Opportunity. Um, first, I'm going to actually make a disclaimer. Um, I'm mostly going to talk about the African American and Latino experience, because that's what I'm a part of. Um, but I do think a lot of the problems and the solutions I talk about are transferable to other groups. Um, and with that, I'll get started. Um, so I'll start with a little story. How many of you guys have heard of Rap Genius? Awesome. <laughs> Uh, so a few years ago, about two and a half, um, Andreessen Horowitz invested 15 million in Rap Genius. And I thought, seriously? 15 million uh, for Rap Lyrics. And I, I firstly found it so incredible because I, I thought to myself, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> why didn't I, why wasn't that a problem for me? Why wasn't that a pain point that I identified with? Um, and thinking about it further, one of the things I realized was it wasn't a problem for me because I grew up in an environment that I heard rap lyrics all the time. I heard hip hop, I heard R&B. It was something that I didn't necessarily need to translate because it was something that I heard every day. And so thinking about that, I wondered what other experiences, what other perspectives are there that I am privy to uh, what other uh, perspectives and experiences is it that I have that someone else doesn't? And so considering that, I wonder to myself if we have a product that is able to, if we have a product that is able to target, to speak to one group, is it the same, can we possibly do the same? Are there experiences, are there issues and things that could help, that could lend, that could help the African American and Latino communities as well? Uh, issues, ideas that not only we could solve, but we can create solutions around and deliver that to a niche market. Is that possible? Um, and so that kind of brings me to my first opportunity, which is product market fit with little or no competition. So similar to the Rap Genius example, I'll talk about Bevel. Bevel is basically Tristan Walker's shaving solution for men of color. He picked this out because that was his pain point. Throughout his entire life, every time he shaved, he always had razor bumps, he always had issues because his hair was curly. And it turned out that there was no solution, no razor out on the market that actually addressed that. And what he did was come to a point where he said, you know, I want to solve it. Now he's had preliminary success, but one of the most incredible things I think about this is that shaving, or particularly the healthcare, is an existing space. But there's a section there of the market that has been untapped. There's a section there that no one, no one was able to see that pain point. No one was able to see that there's a piece here that he can attend to. There's a niche market there. And I think one of the amazing things, particularly with African Americans and Latinos, is that as the rate of num as the rate as the number of African Americans and Latinos increase, by the year 2040, what we'll see is that most minorities become the majority. What you'll see is that niche market will actually overtake the current market. The financial opportunities that are available for those products, those services that you'll be able to, that are speaking to the pain points of those groups of people, that will not only become something to invest in, it won't just become about the ideas that speak to, that speak to us, that represent, uh, I guess, who I am, but it also kind of speaks to the financial opportunity, the investment that's there. And so, my point is, increase diversity, because we have a product market fit with little or no competition. There's the financial opportunity there. My second, my second point is talent acquisition. So I'll start off with, um, I'll start off with a few statistics. By the year 2020, 1.4 million jobs will be added to the tech sector. 70% of those jobs will go unfilled. Currently, about 8% of African Americans and Latino graduate with CS degrees. About 9%, roughly half of them, never enter the tech space. I was almost one of them. About two years ago, uh, so two years ago I went to a school nearby um, and I had gotten to a point where I had taken a lot of CS classes. I really enjoyed my experiences, but I couldn't get a job. I had started applying by September and by April, I still hadn't had an opportunity. I couldn't find a place where I could actually contribute, where my work would be validated. I didn't yet feel confident in my skills where I could go out and do something on my own. 
I'd, I'd gone to college and I'd started setting CS, so it was something that I was interested in, but I hadn't yet gotten to a point where I could make an impact. And so at that point, I, I said to myself, I'm gonna give myself a deadline. If I can't find a job, if I can't find an opportunity, something where I could actually really learn to code, really contribute, I'll look for another job outside of tech. And thankfully, uh, I got a call from Code 2040. Um, it's a nonprofit nearby. Uh, and what they aim to do is actually increase the number of African Americans and Latinos in Silicon Valley. Um, and so you apply to that fellowship. If you're accepted, you get a job at a partner company, um, and you work there as well. And so not only do you get technical experience, but you also, you also get the opportunity to receive mentorship. You get the opportunity to bond with peers who are similar to you. And through that experience, not only did I gain so much confidence, but the amount of hours I've spent coding, roughly 65 plus, uh, I learned so much. And as I look back on that, I think to myself, I, I was almost one of those people. I was almost one of those people who planned on leaving the tech, center, tech sector. And a lot of that was just based off the simple fact of a little bit of marginalization, a little bit of feeling like I couldn't contribute, I couldn't get to a place where I could actually make use of the skills that I was learning. And so I bring that back to my second opportunity, talent acquisition, um, to give you a little bit of example. Two of my classmates, uh, one, was, uh, one was black and one was uh, Middle Eastern. They were both freshmen and they were both really good at coding. And they applied to a ton of jobs for an internship. And one of them got offers from everywhere he applied to. One of them only got two um, at two big companies, but only two. Uh, what ended up happening is that um, the black guy, his name is James, he only received two offers, even though he'd actually been coding prior to coming to college. He had had about five years of experience by the time he had gotten to college. He was really good, but the gap that was there demoralized him. And it came to a, a point where he felt like, it came to a point where it, it, it destabilized them. And looking at, looking at the opportunity here, if you get to a point where you're ready to give up and you never have the opportunity, if you don't have Code 2040 call, or if you aren't able to find the right opportunity there, you'll miss out. And what happens, not only to those, uh, I think sometimes we talk about that opportunity as being really bad for the person. You know, it's awesome if they don't get the opportunity. It's, um, it's awful if they aren't able to have that experience. But it's more important to really understand that not only do they suffer from it, but we do as well. Of that 1.4 million jobs that entered the tech sector, so many people who could have filled that opportunity, who have closed that gap, are now left out. So the ability for uh, the, the ability to acquire talent, that I would say is the, the second opportunity. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is why targeting doesn't work. So why your current why your current strategy may not be working as you planned. Uh, I was talking to a friend and she asked me. She said, you know, like that's awesome. Increasing diversity is great, but we've tried that and it doesn't work. We haven't been able to get really good results where I work. How is, it, how is it something that we can implement? And what I'd argue is, you need people of color on your side. And so I'm specifically here speaking about the African American Latino experience, but I, I want to broaden that out to other groups. You need the people with whom you want to include. You need them also leading the charge. You need them also sitting in the room so that they are able to communicate that message and understand how to not only be inclusive of that group, but also understand the problems, the pain points, and also how to really solve that in a language that they understand. So that not only are you benefiting from their inclusion, but they're also benefiting as well. It needs to be a mutual partnership as opposed to one to the other. That's why targeting a certain group, why targeting minorities or aiming towards women doesn't necessarily work. Because it's one direction as opposed to bi-directional. Um, and so just to review, increasing diversity. Increasing diversity, I think when we talk about diversity, we tend to really think about the justice of diversity, about you know, doing well or 
trying to make it fair, but I think that what I really would like you to go away from is thinking of diversity, increasing diversity as an investment. An investment that not only you make in someone else, you allow for entrepreneurs, role models of color, minorities, women, um, et cetera, to be included, but also as an investment for you, as something where if you're able to invest in, you're increasing the products and the opportunities that are entering the space. You're able to ride the wave of new innovation, of new ideas, the trickle down that happens when you increase diversity. It's about the talent, it's about the ideas, it's about the product, but it's also about the return that you get. And I hope that you understand that the diversification of Silicon Valley is, it's a bit about the people, it's a bit about all of what I've just stated, uh, but it's a game changer. It's the next wave of innovation. It's also what you can invest in and profit from, both financially and also holistically. And that's it.